Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of uh, Sin Hardware Tekken 10. Today we're going over the UD5H, the Z77 one. This is the Revision 1.1, which is the new model. I'll tell you differences between the Revision 1.0 and Revision 1.1 as we go through the review. Today we're just going to take a look at the board itself. Uh, this board's been out for a really long time, so uh, everyone can just go check the specs and stuff like that. Um, so let's take a look at the voltage regulator first. The voltage regulator is composed of these chokes right here, the MOSFETs, and this PWM. This is a fully digital board. That means that the CPU vCore, the CPU iGPU, the VCC SA, VCC IO, and DRAM are all digitally controlled, which is pretty significant. Um, this is one of the only boards that actually has that. Gigabyte's one of the only manufacturers who actually offers that, so that's pretty cool. First of all, two of these phases up here, one, two, both provide power for the iGPU inside the CPU. Then we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That gives you all the 12 phases for the vCore. One phase over here is shared, and it's for the VCSA and VCIO, better known on the BIOS as VTT and IMC voltages. Okay, all of them are controlled by the IR3567A. Um, this IR3567A is a 6 plus 2 phase controller. That means the plus 2 phases are going for the iGPU's 2 phases, and then 6 phases are being doubled through... Um, I believe six um, IR3 3598, which are doublers with dual drivers integrated. We'll take the heatsink off and take a look at that in a second. Um, so the heatsink on this board is blue. It's a little darker than what it seems in this video because the light's just bouncing off of it and making it look a little brighter, but it is pretty dark blue. Uh, there is another board that came out, the UD5H Revision 1.0. Some of them had much brighter heatsinks and some had darker. All the Revision 1.1 had this dark, dark heatsink. Um, it's much more desirable, I think. It looks better, too. So I've actually unscrewed the heat sinks. Uh, four screws here and then four up here. All of them are pretty high quality. Now you just take this off. So here's the heat sink. You can see the contact with the phases is really good. Right here, the MOSFETs. And then here, the PCH also made a nice indentation there, which is exactly what we want to see. So we'll put the heat sink down here. Now we'll go over the voltage regulator. So we have a bunch of chips. Um, each phase is composed of uh, Renaissance MOSFETs. Uh, two of them are K0393, and uh, those are both low-side MOSFETs. And then we have a high-side MOSFET that's a K03B7. Uh, that can output about 20 to 25 amps per phase. These chokes also support up to about 30 amps, maybe 25 amps per phase. These are the IR3598, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then one here provides the two phases for the iGPU. The VTT here is controlled of IR3570 right here, provides one phase over here and then two phase up here to another IR3598 for the two DRAM phases made up of the same MOSFETs except only one um, K0393 and then one K03B7 uh, for this. But uh, the CPU vCore uh, actually has MOSFETs on the back an extra one for each of those phases, so it's three MOSFETs per phase. Anyways, so now let's go over some other aspects of the board. Uh, we do have some awesome overclocking features, clear CMOS reset, power button, the post goes in excellent position, voltage read points are provided right up here, you can just probe it with your digital multimeter, dual BIOS switch right here so you can switch the BIOS back and forth to the main and backup, then you have this PCIe extra power which can actually give extra 2.3 volts to these PCIe slots. The PCIe arrangement is 16x, 8x, 4x, um, and they are all linked together, all from the CPU and all PCI 3.0. You need an iRebridge CPU to run this one. Um, however, if you want to do three-way crossfire, that's possible. Three-way will go at 8x, 4x, 4x. Two-way will go at 2x, 8x, 8x. And a single card will go 16x, all PCI 3.0. If you use uh, NVIDIA cards, you can only do two-way SLI right here and here. There's a hack, though, from some older generation boards, maybe like 775 socket and... Maybe you can get that working in 8x, 4x, 4x, and SLI, but I, I kind of doubt that. Um, it's a little tough to do, and you might have issues. Uh, the USB, all of them really go through these two VLI hubs. Now, these are upgraded from the previous version. The previous version used the VLI 8, um, 810. These are VLI 811. 811 has a new technology that allows uh, 
three times more powerful charging while doing data transfer at the same time without slowing down data transfer. If you're charging your phone, you can transfer data at the same speed. These are both super speed qualified and these should have less problems than the original VL800 hubs that people didn't like. So the hubs work like this. The PCH has four lanes. Um, two of them are provided here for USB 3.0, but then the other two, one goes to this VLI hub and one goes to here. This VLI hub provides the USB 3.0 on the back and this VLI hub provides these two internal headers. So that's USB 3.0. All right. Now we have also have SATA. Um, so these two, these four blacks, um, they're all SATA three gigabytes per second revision two. These two white ones are Intel SATA six gigabytes per second revision three. These two gray ones are from the Marvel. Now the Marvel controller is here. Now the Marvel can either switch the lanes here or it can switch a lane here and then one back for eSATA. So that's pretty cool too. Um, and anyways, so we can move on a little bit right now. Also, it's this PCI switch right here that provides the switching between here and there. And then this will provide the ports to the back. There's two v uh, Marvel um, SE9172s. They have software RAID, um, so you can RAID. Anyway, so these are the PCIe switches that provide the switching between these. There's a PCIe controller. Uh, so basically, one lane of PCIe from the PCH goes to this IT8892E, and that provides one PCI output here. However, the Gigabyte takes the other PCI output because this chip provides two PCI outputs from one PCI Express. To this uh, VT six zero three VT six three zero eight P that provides two thirteen ninety four A ports and one's here and one is in the back. Then we have uh, the audio on this board is the ALC eight nine eight, and this is a really top notch controller hundred ten decibel uh, SNR. And then we have two audio amplifiers, one here, a DRV632, and another one here, DRV632. DRV632 are made by Texas Instruments. They provide up to 600 ohm impedance for your headphones. This one provides the output for the front headphone. This one provides the output for the back green port, the green socket right here. Now, there's another difference between Revision 1 and Revision 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, in the beginning, this is a... You can take the output from the codec, and uh, usually they're controlled by software, and the software will control how they're distributed to the back uh, slot sockets right here. However, in the beginning, the sockets weren't correctly distributed, um, and if you use Linux or something, then the green port wouldn't basically work. Um, so only in Windows it worked, and that provides some issues, especially for the guys who do Mac Hackintoshes, um, but this board has that fixed. Anyways, we have two... Uh, Nix right here. Uh, this is an Intel one, and then we have an Athros here. This this is an Athros um, AR8161. It's brand new. Uh, it's upgrade from the previous that was on the revision 1.0. That was an Athros AR8151. So that's pretty cool. Here we have the Super IO and IT8728F. Uh, this provides all the fan control, fan support, voltage monitoring, all that stuff. Um, now a lot of the features from this have actually been taken and given to other stuff on the board. Um, for instance, the PCIe slots and all that have to be clocked from the Super I.O. Um, and the ports are actually shared. So this Super I.O. doesn't have enough to give you total control over all the fan headers. It can only give you up to three. So that's actually given to the CPU, System 1, and I think System 2 and 3 are mixed. Also, you have to use PWM fans to get control over the other ports, except for the fan header on the CPU fan. Uh, that can work in voltage mode. You just set that through the UEFI. Um, I don't know what else is there to cover on this board. Uh, we have an M SATA slot right here, pretty nice. It's actually switched between SATA port 5. So if you use the SATA port 5, 3 gigabytes per second here, and if you use M SATA, you can only use one at a time. So make sure you know that before you buy the board. Uh, this board is really feature packed, it's really cool. Uh, we have one more thing to cover, and that is the back panel I.O. So we can actually cover that now. So, like I said, the back panel is composed of these four USB 3.0. These four USB 3.0 are actually given by the VLI hub. Uh, these are two NICs. I believe this one's Intel and this one's Athros. 7.1 audio. This is SPDIF out optical. Uh, here are video outputs, D-sub, DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. All these come from the PCH, uh, which actually communicates with the CPU's iGPU through the FDI um, interface, which is separate from DMI. Uh, here you have that eSATA, 6 gigabytes per second, provided by the Marvel port. Above it, we have 1394E and two USB 2.0 from the Intel controller. So that basically concludes our little uh, quick video review of this board. And uh, if you're interested in buying one, if you want an Ivory Bridge, right now would be a pretty good time to get it cheap. Um, and then you can get this board as well. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed the review.